Hi folks, welcome to the next edition of Serverless Crack with myself Dave Anderson, I'm author and contributor at the Serverless Edge and technical fellow at Bizarre Voice. Hi everyone, Mark McCann, architect at Globalization Partners and author and contributor at the Serverless Edge. Hey, Michael Royley, architect with GP and a contributor with Service Edge. So we are now um, post AWS reInvent. I spent the week running around like a maniac, talking to loads of people, seeing loads of stuff. So we thought we'd do, we must do like a, a post invent. What do we call it? I don't know. We did our pre invent. This is our post invent. Um, but as usual, the conference was nuts. There was about like 60,000 people at it in Las Vegas. Last the whole week. I think they've got eight hotels. If you try and book sessions in all the hotels, it's it's a hard it's a hard station because you end up running around the place. So it it's really is a glorified networking event, what it is. But I always think it's really interesting to see that the, the almost the tone of the themes that AWS are talking about. Because you can when you sit back and see their kind of narrative, you can see how the organization's evolving. I thought we'd maybe touch on that. Um, I know you both were watching it from afar. What did you? What was your impressions of what they were talking about? No, it was good. It was, and I think watching it from afar and watching it from, uh, you, you almost can get to see the 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 way it's moving, right? You're not so much. You probably you probably seen more than I did. Yeah, I was going to say, Mark, that we'd seen more than you did. <laughs> yeah, and, um, but yeah, I think a lot of it is. You know, this is the next generation of cloud, the next generation. I think we we talked about that in our, our post session. I think it's much more focused on delivering value quickly, right? Much more about, mm. you know, removing a lot of the barriers to, to business adoption and uh, business enablement. So, yeah, I think I think that was, that was good. There was um, lots of great announcements, lots of good stuff, but I think, yeah, focusing on that time to value and removing a lot of the the impediments to that value have, have been coming through, which is good. Mm. Um, I think what, one thing I thought was, very interesting. There's definitely a more well. There is always a customer focus, but there's much more. I would say a solution focus. Um, I think a lot of the focus from AWS before has been migration, migration, migration. Let's get people moved. Um, there was a really interesting article in Silicon Angle. Um, it's called um, AWS Chief Adam Spelsky hints at the next gen cloud. It came out I think on the first day of the event, and um, he basically talks about um. The well, he talks about two things. He talks about the, the the classic cloud versus the next gen cloud. He talks about how AWS is expanding and growing up. So there's much more focus on solutions. And he he talks about the the classic cloud for infrastructure as a service and the platform of the cloud. And then really next gen is is where you're got ISVs and true cloud. I think what he what he called it. And it's really it's a lot about um really using the cloud to kind of power your kind of business journey, which is exactly the way we talk about it in the the value flywheel effect. Um, the phrases we've been using is legacy cloud and modern cloud, but it really struck me because the, the, the thing, the way he was talking about cloud was pretty much exactly how we've been talking about the cloud in the book. So I thought that was, that was really interesting. Yeah, I think that was, when I'd seen that, it did, bring my thoughts back to like a previous podcast we had done on that you know the difference between the um sort of traditional classic uses of cloud and then the organizations you know need to transition from that into, into modern so i mean yeah I, re I read that article that was that was an awesome kind of write up on it and it does kind of tie into that and i and i think the you know what we talk about there in terms of the the flywheel effect and and leveraging the modern cloud to Build that momentum into, um, you know, um, business focus, getting business value yeah. um, as quickly as possible. I think you're starting to see it in a lot of, you know, there's a lot of announcements there that actually are in and around that and shows that, yeah. the, you know, that they're that's what they're backing, which is which is great. Like so, um, yeah. yeah, that was really positive uh, to see, and it's, it's it's good that we're we're in line with that. <laughs> yeah, I think one, one, of, one of the big things we talk about is creating that environment for success so that you can deliver that value quickly and a lot of the the uh, capabilities and announcements were around removing developer friction or enabling developers to go faster in a, in a better way and even yeah, yeah. like from the from the, the getting that value better observability you know better better telemetry <laughs> better metrics so you can actually see how you're going it was good to see yeah and even the way i think of it as well is a lot of the 
it's when you Google cloud, you, you, you see all the cloud things like you know compute and storage and all that kind of what I call those low level primitives. And AWS, they're clearly marketing leader at that. If you want to compute, you just get it from AWS. So mm -hmm. that's been cloud for the last like you know fifteen years. But this next generation cloud is about I need a business capability. Um, and and for me, the I get really excited like, but I thought it was interesting last year when Goldman Sachs brought out their financial services data cloud which is basically, here's a bunch of financial service data that you can just get. So you're not getting, it's not a data lick, it's actual a financial capability you can get. So it's it's much more than SaaS, it's almost like a business capability. And again, when you do your wordly mapping correctly, all the cloud primitives, you shove them off to the right, if they're not a commodity, and then you look at what's the business capability I need, and then yeah, how can I build on top of that? And that's that's exactly what the value flywheel effect is. You're looking at your business strategy for what do you need to use versus what do you need to build and then use your technical strategy to build the right thing you're not stuck using something that someone else is going to expose as a SaaS. so i thought that was super powerful like and um and there's a whole dialogue around this i would definitely have a look at that article in the silicon angle where he explains it in in, in great detail yeah i think the the, the rising serverless right there at the yeah. keynotes uh, containers weren't really mentioned at all, I don't think. Um, Somebody uh, said that, that the container wasn't mentioned once. Now, serverless was mentioned a few times, but basically you can see they're in their mind, they're kind of moving, moving beyond those, some of those terms. Yeah, I think everything is moving asynchronous. Everything is moving event-driven. And I think <laughs> now the, the environment, the primitives, the building blocks are in place to do event-driven architecture properly in a way that... Yeah, teams can actually embrace it and understand it and do it in a really well architected way. I think a lot of those things were hard to do uh, in the past. I think things like EventBridge, EventBridge Pipes, you know, um, Step Functions Maturity, it's really enabling um, teams to yeah. deliver event driven architectures um, in, a, in an I easier way and a much better way. Yeah, I almost seen it as you could almost see like a consolidation of those core primitives. Like these are the primitives that we're really, really good at. Yep. Now we're going to open up the solution space to help, you know, effectively customers do interesting things with them. And you can see that also with partnerships with other big companies, yep. like some Mongo, et cetera, and Cloudflare. So yep. you definitely see a more a more ecosystem there. But I think what was really cool was um, uh, Werner, the CTO Werner Vogels, spent about the first, probably third of his talk talking about EDA, event driven architecture. We had a big deal of it, quite a funny video of, Going to a cafe, getting a synchronous burger and chips. <laughs> Can't end up making a chip at a time. So it was very funny. Talking about being a synchronous world versus an asynchronous world. But I mean, as we've been talking about, serverless is basically turning into EDA. So that was a massive endorsement of of, and we also had EDA Day in London back in the first September with some of the AWS serverless dudes. So it was great to see his focus on that. Yeah. Yeah, and again, and even tying that back in, like, I mean, that EDA, you know, whenever you're trying to describe what serverless is and that serverless mindset to, you know, executives or teams, it's a fact that you're describing a lot of times as EDA, you know, and so. Yeah, and the, th and the funny thing is, well, when you, and I, I, I wouldn't say I knew this, but I could see it and didn't understand what was happening. You can see people talking about serverless, but not EDA, and you're thinking they're not getting it. No. It's not about just implementing a function. You know what I mean? It's by thinking about the event that kicks off a piece of compute or whatever. So uh, describing it like EDA, but then having the tools to do it properly. Like back in the day when we were trying to do EDA years ago, the tool set was terrible. But now it's 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 far better. Yeah, I think the functions are rapidly going away, right? The lambdas are usually they're going away. We're going for more direct connections. You're going for more uh, composition and orchestration directly from service to service, right? And you know, things like mm -hmm. step functions really linked up together. So it's yeah. If you're just focusing on Lambda, you're you're missing the bigger picture here. Mm. But it's and funny. Go ahead, sorry. No, it's funny. And sorry, Dave, I was just going to say on that. Like, um, it's funny that I, I think even in that talk was the amount that he mentioned was it the was it the distributed? Well, Amazon's original. What was it? Their their distributed computing manifesto. And, oh yeah. And yep. what it was kind of built on, and 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 but it makes sense. You know, and and even when you look at the scale which these guys have got to, you know, it's it's the same principles apply. You know, it's and it's 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 it, yeah. It was I thought it was very good. Um, if I heard at some point I heard someone say that you, you need to think about that distributed way for service is going to be called a trillion times. You're like, ooh, yeah, <laughs> hurt your head. 
Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, I thought that was really good. But then go back to the book. I mean, we've been talking about EDA quite a bit and that way of thinking with like event storming and, and that way of, of thinking about how you build your 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 applications and the whole socio-technical thing. It's not just the architecture, but there's also a bunch of announcements that that... That, that that backed up some of the things we've been saying in the book, especially around the the developer enablement and stuff. Yeah. Um, or but probably the key one being Code Catalyst, which is there. There there was a lot of criticism in AWS in previous years about poor developer experience. Yeah. So with Code Catalyst, definitely um a big move to try and kind of um make that more seamless. Which I, it's still early, like, but it looks looks pretty interesting. No, it's, it's great. It's, it's... Stitching together a number of things that have evolved over the last while, but it's really that can you enable product teams to rapidly deliver value mm-hmm. in a way that doesn't uh, doesn't blow up two months down the road, right? So it's it's gonna and I, I'm like interested to see how that evolves, but it's it yeah. really is an accelerator for you know teams coming onto the cloud, teams coming into serverless, um, being able to in a frictionless way. I was going to say that's that's where I was going to look for was frictionless um, developer experience. You know, isn't it? It's really in the book. It's 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 really under our um, next best action and sort of next keeping it under that. Yeah, completely. And it was nice though as well the way that is more like a, an ecosystem because they're they're linking out to Slack and GitHub and other tools. They're not making you use AWS tools, which is which will, will boost the success rate. Yeah, I think something we've been talking about for a while and been keeping an eye on is cloud IDEs, right? Doing your actual yep. development in the cloud as well. There's no need for a big heavyweight machine anymore you know, with no. uh, cloud and another sort of um, cloud cloud IDEs. And then well architected was well represented, which is our, our fourth phase, our long term values. Lots of mean well architect is not going away. No. We continue to build that out and build it into things. And the, the whole idea of of patterns as well and having these kind of blueprints and accelerators was, yep. was also very, very much in effect. Yeah, you're seeing the term well architected being mentioned in all the talks in some way, or shape or form. Um, how do we deliver a well architected solution? It's, it's, so it's, it's permeating through everything that AWS are doing. So it's great to see. And I hope to see more maturity in that. So ideally, a lot of the patterns, a lot of the examples they have should be well architected examples and patterns. So I'm hoping this, you know, we, we see more adoption of that. But um, there's a there's a, there's a yeah. fine line to walk through. You want people to understand and get going quickly, but you also want to make sure that the day two activities are taken care of and well architected helps with that. Yeah. And then we had um, an or- Interesting instruments, you had event bridge pipes, which which I have thought it was deep. Takes us inspiration from the, the Hunix pipe, which spent many years back in the day then about with. So yeah. that was cool. Nice, nice connections between um, um um events and events bridge. Yeah, I think just removing operational burden and, and complexity and, and allowing you to scale without or without really worrying about it too much. Um, yeah, I think there's been lots of good blogs about the pipes, so we're not gonna do it here, but it's uh, that's another great capability that allows you to do massive event-driven architectures at scale without having to worry about the underlying um, operational sort of aspects, which is great. But and the... on that, I mean, sorry, there was lots of kind of stuff around like reducing operational burden, making making the lower level things less complicated, which which is also good. Oh yeah, yeah, and, I, and even security and stuff as well. I think was well represented, like the the verified permissions and like Mark, I know you were all yeah. over that one as well. It's it's it's. That's an interesting one to see where they where they're going with that. I know it's 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 out in pilot at the minute. Or yeah, I think I, I think that that'll that'll probably have as big an impact as anything. I think um, you know, being able to you know, manage those fine grained permissions and you know, do authentication authorization properly is a big deal, especially for your custom app. So most companies on a certain scale have their own custom built version of this. So there's probably lots of. Uh, organizations looking at it and going, hey, we have something like that would be a custom built and spend a lot of time and effort in. There's a there's an evolutionary step that they can easily take now to start to embrace some of these things, which is great. Uh, yeah, but that's okay. But you just need to be uh, acknowledge you're ahead of the curve and have the courage to delete your custom built solution. Mm-hmm. Uh, deleting code is a good idea, right? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. It just means you're early. Yeah. And then you'd uh, a bunch of step function stuff out, which is cool. But I, but I must say I particularly like the snap start. Which oh, yeah. is the we know a few people who are working on that. It's the the ability to drop um, Java large Java applications in the Lambda, and and the the performance time is is, yeah. is through the roof. So there's a lot of stuff there around. Um, if you have a Spring Boot application, you can drop a 
uh, an average Spring Boot application in the Lambda, and you will get similar performance, but way cheaper to run. Yeah, and it's not just like Java. There will be other languages as well, but that snapshotting a VP a V a virtual machine effectively, and then mm -hmm. making that available on demand is a big deal. There's some caveats yeah. to it, but I think it's a, again it's another one of those addressing the the uh, the myths around cold starts and uh, you, know, you can't yep. use Lambda for for high performance um, workloads. It's nonsense. It's just it's, it's just another nail in the coffin of some of those old myths. It's, def it's definitely interesting from a perspective if we do have these large framework oriented kind of services. Could you just leverage that for ephemeral compute? You know, and oh, completely where it it just opens up maybe an option that wasn't there this time yeah. a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I, I think that's really interesting about that one. I think that yeah. could be a game changer. It, it'd be interesting to see how that one unfolds over the year, you know? Yeah, that's a really good one if you're looking to move and get on the service quickly. And I was talking to the architect who worked that, a guy called Mark Sales, and I think he's got a couple of talks out. If you look up uh, reInvent, uh, AWS Events YouTube channel, I think there's some stuff about that. Yeah, it was a great talk and also um, reference for the example as well that I've been sort of sharing around in our, in our uh, context. And again, I think it's another good on-ramp. It removes another one of those barriers for enterprises who maybe have an embrace serverless. It's another way of getting you, getting you into the, the serverless mindset. It's great. And speaking of which, I mean, I suppose I, I was talking to a good few people, like, but the, 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 the message I was hearing loud and clear is a lot of big enterprises and large companies that think, right, We've moved to cloud now, brand. Now we need help doing the next piece. Yeah. In fact, they need help creating their value flywheel. It's like we've done the move. Now we need to go on to that next stage of modernization, next gen, whatever you want to call it. So um, good news for the book, yep. <laughs> because that's what it tells you how to do. Um, lots of nice feedback as well around the book and people are getting their first copies, which was which was cool. And didn't yeah. get any cheeky comments yet. <laughs> but... Um, I, I, I spoke to a lot of people who were trying that or like serverless, like, you know, transformation, trying to create that value flywheel. And there's, there's, there's definitely a lot of um, demand for more advice and guidance and, and stories of how other companies have done this. Yeah. So that's why I think that's interesting. Yeah, I think it's the, the ecosystem has never been um, better for applying the value flywheel effect now, right? A lot of the challenges mm -hmm. we had in the past have sort of been addressed. So, um, it should be easier for uh, people adopting it now to to, to make progress. Yeah. Well, that's actually, I was talking to someone yesterday about it, and they were saying, like, how do we get started? And I it was kind of saying, well, listen, if you started eight years ago, there's a lot of hard yard, but starting now, it's, you know, it's it's easier because there's a lot of the, the you know, the, the challenges have been resolved. So if you just go in fresh now with, with the modern tool set, then... You know, a lot of the underlying things have been solved. So you just need to focus on your 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 business domain and, and your own teams. Yeah. Like when in the past when we were saying you want to be well architected serverless first, people might have looked at us a little bit funny. But that's starting to uh, permeate throughout all of AWS now. And uh, so it's a, a lot more of an accepted sort of term that people understand what that means. So you'll have a lot less uh, inertia to uh, going going well architected and going serverless first now than we had five, six years ago. Yeah, serverless first. Not scary, not scary anymore. No. Yeah, <laughs> and and I think there's there's a lot of companies coming out now, and they're they do have their value fl flywheel effect, you know. And there's lots of evidence for it, and there's lots of good examples, you know. And it's you know, um, and I think it's you know with the with the book, um, we're we're describing that, and you know, it's it, it's there. Um, so never a better time to start. <laughs> um, so there you go, and. Just to remind you, the book was released yesterday in the UK mm -hmm. and uh, last week over in the States and be out right now in, in, in different regions. So yep. uh, order from your favorite bookseller. Um, so that's the crack. Reinvent was, uh, it was a good laugh, um, but great to see everyone again. I think we're back to kind of pre-pandemic levels, but I, I think everyone came back sick, which is which was a drag lick, but it was definitely good to see everyone. Um, so have a look at the um, the, the, the blog at theserverlessedge.com, at Twitter at Serverless Edge, and uh, our YouTube channel. And thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody.